Joining me here on console is Quincy Harp, who is the mission designer for the HTV activities. Thanks for joining us, Quincy. Oh, thanks for having me here. So first of all, I think this is the first time I've heard of a mission designer. It sounds very glamorous. Can you explain to us just a little bit about what that job entails? Sure thing. Well, in robotics, we've kind of got uh, two kind of positions. Uh, we've got our lead robotics officer, and his primary job is to integrate with the rest of the team. And for this mission, his name is John Bellingham. He's actually Canadian, and he works with us uh, through this Canadian Space Agency. And my job is the mission designer. And in that position, we basically look at the requirements of where hardware comes up or where entire vehicles come up and where they need to be installed, and we design the path in between those two, those two spots. And you were explaining to me this this process started at least a year ago that the two of you were working together on this? Uh, missions typically start being planned about a year ahead. I was not assigned to this one until about eight months ago, but typically there's about a year-long process with looking at the information and getting ready to go and going from so there. So you, you hit the ground running? Uh, very quickly, very quickly. And how, how big of a team does it take to support these types of activities? Uh, it varies from time to time. Uh, typically you'll have about a three-person team that follows the entire mission the whole way through. Uh, but when it comes down to the actual execution, you have bit lar largely as many people as you need, whether it's the three people that are on console actually executing or the next three people that are coming on after that team. So bring us up to speed. A lot's gone on. Everything's gone really smoothly. But can you talk to us a little bit about especially the things that uh, occurred over the weekend? Sure thing. It's been a great last weekend so far. Uh, we actually captured the vehicle on uh, Friday. The crew used the Space Station Robotic Arm, or Cannon Arm 2, to capture the vehicle. And then, from that point on, the ground took control of it in order to help save the crew time, give them their time back. And we were able to maneuver the HTV vehicle all the way to its install location and install it, thereby giving the crew back all the time that they needed. Uh, after that was completed, we had kind of one day off before we came back on yesterday, Sunday, and then continued on with a lot of our ground commanded activities to extract the exposed pallet from the HTV. And it's coming up carrying a couple different experiments for us, as well as a uh, couple different replacement pieces of hardware for the space station. We extracted that. Then we maneuvered it to position, handed off to the Japanese robotic arm, which they also controlled from the ground. And from that point, they took it and installed it on their back porch, kind of their exposed facility is what it's actually called. And once it was there, uh, it, it's ready for its transfers now. So this was a lot of teamwork with the crew, um, a lot of things that you guys were taking versus parts that you know they were picking up and operating from the space station. Uh, so it really exemplifies kind of the, the ultimate teamwork, if you will, ground control teams and on orbit crew members. Oh, absolutely, and very international too. We've got US and European crew members on orbit executing steps, as well as both Canadian and American robotics experts executing their steps and Japanese experts ex executing their steps. So it's truly showing the International Space Station. So everything that's, that happened starting Friday and over the weekend uh, sounds really critical, but you were telling me that really you guys have some of your biggest milestones are yet to come. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of the dynamic parts happened on Friday, but when it comes to a lot of the, the down and dirty kind of uh, ground control work, a lot of that's coming up in about two weeks where we're going to use, again, Cannon Arm 2 along with Dexter, the small dexterous robot that we have, to transfer those um, pieces of hardware that came up on that exposed pallet and get those to their final locations on the space station. That's going to take about six days of uh, ground control operations. Uh, but we're looking forward to that. It's a significant amount of work to do, but we expect it to go well. So I'm curious, what's been, which of all these activities is the most challenging? Uh, typically, the capture and the release of HTV itself is the most challenging, just because you've got two vehicles flying in space at extreme amounts of speed, uh, and they've got to come together. You've got a lot of integration that has to go on with the entire team to make sure that those things turn out well. Um, while robotically those are complex, uh, probably the most complex for us is those upcoming operations we have in about two weeks. And that's just because there's so much to happen? Exactly. So you said six days worth That's pretty what we full think. days? Yeah, we're expecting pretty full days, uh, six solid days of those operations to get all those things going. And uh, it's pretty small interfaces that you're operating from the ground here uh, up to a robot in space. So it's, it's a cool factor to the job, but it is a complication. Yeah, I think sometimes we make things look so easy because they, they go well, but so much time and effort goes into that, that pre-planning. Can you tell us a little, you know, you mentioned the two vehicles traveling and, and those dynamic operations. Can you maybe explain for some, some folks who can't really appreciate how challenging that might be, 
what really goes into that, and when do you guys really get to breathe a sigh of relief? Oh, yeah. Um, from the overall perspective, it's definitely a, a significant rendezvous problem. If nothing else, to put these two vehicles in the same space is amazing. And I don't know rendezvous very well, but I've heard it described as trying to stand in the backyard and throw a tennis ball while somebody in the front yard tries to throw a tennis ball and make them touch just slightly on the way across. So that's always very complicated. Um, as well as doing the constant robotics that we're doing. Uh, we've, we've built a lot of good techniques over the years with a lot of the ground control and everything else to make things better, but it still is very complicated. But in the end, we really aren't comfortable until we finally get to that final release day on HTV and we see the vehicle departing and everything's completed well. At that, that point, then we'll be able to relax a little bit. Well, we hope that everything continues to go well. And why we have you, can you just tell us a little bit about your background and, and what led, led you to this position that you have now? Oh, it's a bit of a long story, but I'll shorten it up. Uh, I lived in the area in high school and uh, always kind of wanted to work at NASA, so I started in some early student programs, uh, an actual high school program, and I transitioned that into what's called a co-op program when I was in college and even transitioned into graduate co-op. So I got a lot of time to see a lot of the things going on at Johnson Space Center and ended up liking working in robotics and robotics flight control and have been doing that job uh, for the most part ever since. Uh, did a brief stint in a Russian support group, so I spent some time in Moscow. But uh, otherwise, it's been great uh, being in robotics. Well, again, congratulations on all the activities this weekend, and we will all continue to watch and look forward to the upcoming activities and um, hope that we can have that same relief with you whenever the, the release happens and all that goes well. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Again, Quincy Harp, the uh, mission designer, as it were, for the current HTV activities going on on board the International Space Station.